Sunday's perfect game was a wonderful story for Dallas Braden and for the Oakland A's. For the Rays, not so much. What does it mean? Where do they go from here? Well, we'll find out soon. It's obviously not a good thing. Having a perfect game thrown against you is embarrassing, it's humiliating. It's something they're going to hear about, they're going to see it on Sports Center. they're going to he- get questions about it. I mean, they were in Chicago a couple weeks ago, and they were remarking how they were still getting questions then about last year's perfect game. Now that it's happened twice, it's going to be even more of a popular subject. On the other hand, it could turn out to be a good thing for the Rays. Offensively, they've got to be close to rock bottom. They've hit 180-something for the last nine games, and they somehow managed to win five of them. Individually, a number of players have been really struggling. Carlos Pena's average is down into the low 180s. B.J. Upton's hitting 225. Carl Crawford is in an 0 for 12. Ben Zober still doesn't have a home run. Maybe this is the kind of thing that serves as a wake-up call. Maybe they step back. Maybe they kind of refocus. They get back to what they were doing earlier in the season. It certainly can't get much worse at this point, you'd think. And when they were perfect game last year, they went up to Toronto, won the next two games, and actually got on a pretty good roll, winning eight of their next 12. But they're in Anaheim now. They don't play well here. They're 1-13 in under Joe Madden. They're 14-40 and overall. Even though the Angels are struggling, they have some pretty good pitching. And former race Scott Casimir is going to be on the mound on Tuesday night. So there's a lot to keep track of, a lot to see what happens next. This is Mark Topkin for the St. Petersburg Times and TampaBay.com.